Well, spring has sprung. It's that time of year again, where the birds are chirping, the bees, well, are flying. It's spring. Guys are playing golf, the grass is turning green, and nature is waking up from its long winter slumber. It's also pretty symbolic too about where we're starting as far as in the arts. We've now covered everything about posture, the tools. Now we're gonna start working on the actual exercises, if you will, about drawing and illustration. We're starting off at the basics, but we're going to be able to really get ourselves into this and we're going to start moving into this and as time goes on you're going to see the introductions get smaller and smaller because we're going to be covering a lot more areas in in um, drawing this particular episode or section as we would say drawing and composition is going to be divided in probably about four parts so this is going to be part one we have quite a bit to cover let's head back over to the house and i'll show you now the three basic shapes that we're going to be going over are going to be the circle or the sphere, the cube or the square, the cone or rectangle. Everything that we make and draw are based on these three basic shapes, all of them. Now before we get started, let's talk about light. There are three types, generally, there's going to be the direct light, there's going to be reflective light, and there's going to be non-directive light. We'll go over those as we're drawing these. The other thing that you have to remember are the shadows. Now, these shadows are going to occur, cast shadow, as you would normally see when direct light hits an object. But that shadow will vary. In other words, as my hand is placed over an object, as you can see here, as my hand pulls away, first it stops. But you can see the distinctive line shadow from my hand. But as I pull further and further away, the shadow becomes diffused. Now that happens out of a couple of things. A, it could be an overcast day if you're outside. It could be also another thing which you're using a direct harsh light, which is very close to the object. These are different tricks to create an illusion that light is further away than where it should be. All right, let's get started. Or, as Nacho would say, Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Warning. 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 Okay. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Now, as we start, I was going to, I am going to demonstrate, not was, but am going to demonstrate how to use or how to sharpen your pencil with a box cutter knife or an X-Acto knife. Now, as I stated earlier, right before this started, I put a warning sign up. This can be very dangerous, extremely dangerous. So again, I'm going to reiterate, 
that if you are a minor, if you're a young individual, I would say under the age of 13, I wouldn't recommend doing this. Um, gain some practice with it first and have your parents with you. Listen to what your parents say. If they don't feel comfortable with you doing it, don't do it at all. Use your pencil sharpener. Now, for those of you who are in college, those of you who are in high school, you're a little older, you'll be able to handle this. But remember, these tools, when you get them out of the package, they are surgically sharp. Okay, they are. They are extremely sharp. Handle them with care. Handle them as a tool, not a toy. I'm going to emphasize that. Do not play around or second guess. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it. Stop immediately. Okay. Now, let's move on. As you'll notice, when you get your pencils from the package, they will either be flat or have this type of sharp tip to it, looking like this, which isn't very, very sharp. But if you are um, going to sharpen these and you find yourself doing an exact, uh, being able to uh, feel confident enough to do this, this is a method that I use. Now, there's two types of methods to work with. First of all, make sure that you hang on to your tools tightly and firmly, including your pencil. Now, if you're just starting off, I would recommend using a bigger, bulkier knife, just like this. The smaller knife, like this, tends to be a little more slippy and squirrely. So you may want to just skip the exact knife and go straight to a, a box cutter like this size here. Uh, if you're just starting off, you'll open up your box cutter and you will want to turn around and shave away from yourself and start off with small little whittles like this. And just spin your pencil around little by little and go by each layer. Don't try to take one big chunk out at a time. What you're going to try and do is you're just going to take one small layer until you get to the point to where you reveal the entire graphite. As you get to the graphite, slow down. Now, when you get to this point, you can now sharpen that. Now, there is a sandpaper pad that you can purchase that looks like this. It's usually used, as you can see, I've used mine here. It comes with little pads of um, sandpaper and you just take them off. You usually use this for your blending stump to shave that off. You can also use this to sharpen the tip of your pencil until you get used to being able to really sharpen that down. If you use this, and again, you can get this at any art store. And you can see how I've sharpened the tip of that. It's relatively sharp, you see? Now, the second way that you can sharpen your pencil will be like this. And let me pull out another pencil here, as I have. For the advanced artists, or for the advanced ones, now what you can do is you can take your pencil and turn it towards you like this. Again, this method is extremely for the advanced artist who knows how to cut once you're able to do this. Because now I have more control and now I'm coming down and shaving little by little as I spin my pencil. Keep in mind though, this is a little more dangerous. And I'm only making small little cuts. Small little chunks. And I'm spinning layer by layer. Give it some practice. It's not going to happen overnight. And again, if you don't feel comfortable using this, go back, turn your pencil around, and start shaving away from the uh, away from yourself. If you get in a rush, you can easily come down and cut yourself here. So don't rush it. And take your time. There's no rush. Now, the advantage to this is that now I can come in 
because I have a better handling of my pencil. And now I can sharpen it with my blade. Whoopsie daisy. Of course, I got my hand dirty, but there you go. And you've sharpened your pencil. Okay, those are the two steps in which you're going to use. But again, I'm going to emphasize, use extreme caution. Don't try to turn around and push yourself into an area you're not quite sure about. If you're not comfortable doing this, go to the pencil sharpener. That's gonna be good enough. All right, let's move on. So I have different angles to show everybody what we're going to be doing. We're going to break this up into three different groups. We're going to do the sphere first. Then we're going to do the cube. Yeah, we'll do the cube next. And then we're going to do the cone or the rec triangle. See, I almost did that again. I almost said rectangle. I got corrected. Triangle. Okay, we'll do that last. The reason we're going to do the cone last in my book, the way I look at it, it is probably one of the most difficult ones to work with because you're working with an ellipse at the bottom. There's a difference between the ellipse and the oval. We'll talk about that later. But what we want to do right now is we want to be able to grab all our information and we're going to put all that together and we're going to work on it, but we're going to break it all down first before we get it all munched up together, okay? All right, here we go. Okay. Um, one other bit of information I have to give you. Now, there's going to be three uh, ways to do your sphere. The first, you can actually, and there's actually three different levels. The first, which is the most easiest, which I'm going to post this, is the drawing that I do. You can follow a drawing from a drawing, and that makes it much easier because you're going to see that I'm going to mark down the pencil shades that I've used and how to start, and then you can build on that. The second one is the actual photograph of the sphere. Now that sphere is going to be a little more challenging because you're going to want to try to make it as close to the photograph as possible. And that's why I said it's a little more challenging. The last one is the actual model itself. Now the reason that becomes a little tougher is because what happens is you're trying to actually take a three-dimensional object and then make it flat on your image, on your picture plane. And that becomes more challenging. On top of that, you're kind of moving back and forth like this. And in doing that, you're not really sitting on top of that image. So whatever's going to be easier. Now, the second thing that I have to tell you, if you decide that you're gonna use your own model, that becomes tougher. And especially if you're only using a drawing board. Because now you have to sit straight and you wanna keep your image in front of you which leads us up to the next part. You'll notice that my model or my object is sitting right in this area that I'm drawing with. I'm not looking to the side. I'm not looking behind me. I am looking as close as I can. So all I have to do is take my eyesight and go from here to here. That's what I want to do. I want to do the minimal amount of movement in my eyes that allows me to stay focused on what I'm doing. In actuality, you want to be able to use your peripheral vision so you're using the whole object and you're not really taking your eyes off the object and you're not taking it off where you're drawing, your reference versus what you're doing. Okay, I have all my tools sitting out in front of me. As you can see, the tools here are all set up. I have everything ready to go. I have my erasers, I have my sharpener, I have my um, sandpaper pad and I have my blending stumps. My pencils are right over here on this side. All right, let's get started. First pencil that I'm gonna start working with, and I think I told everybody where I start off with, is a 2B. It's about the middle. 
And that's basically where I'm going to start. Now, for you beginners, and I showed you before, it's okay to make your circle with any kind of template or something round. The exercise that we're working with is light and shadow. Remember at the very beginning when I showed you how to work the circles? If you've been practicing that, you'll probably know even from the time that you saw the first video or the first episode, you will probably have seen that you've improved on some of those circles if you've been practicing. But if not, go ahead and use a template or anything that's round in order to create a circle. All right, the way I'm holding my pencil is not like this. I'm holding my pencil in a light formation here where I'm keeping the pencil. There's a, there's a way to, to hold it. Also, the way I'm standing, again, I'm about one arm length away from my picture plane. As you can see where the board is here, I'm about one length around that. I'm also standing away. You'll see that I'm able to move sideways. I am not facing my image this way. I'm facing sideways. This allows me to extend and to lean back, draw and lean back so that I can see where I'm going on this, okay? All right, let's begin. I'm gonna start my circle again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up here, start. And this is going to be A to B. And it's the medium part of, and I'm gonna draw my circle and the reason I'm drawing it nice and big here, I've got a flat spot up here, is because so you can see what I am exactly doing on this here. All right. I have my general idea of where my sphere is going to go. Now, from this point here, I'm going to switch my pencil. Again, I'm going to say this isn't ironclad. It's not in stone. This is the technique that I use. You can turn around and move in a different direction. I'm giving you a base on what to work with. This gives me my outline on what I'm working with. As you can see, I've started my circle here. It's giving me an idea of, the, of, of how things are set up. Now, I can see here I've got the light right there. I know there's probably a bit of a glare, but that is so I can see the light off of what I'm using as my subject or my um, <clears throat> my reference here. Okay, now, um, usually what you wanna do is you wanna put your pencils back where they were so you're not looking all over the place for them, you know exactly where they are. I'm gonna to move to an H pencil. Move that to an H, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly shade the entire sphere. Now, keep in mind, mine is rather large. If you have a smaller sphere, it's going to be a bit easier to use. I mean, less area to cover. I'm sorry, not easier to use. There's less area to cover, and so therefore you don't really have to... Um, you don't have to really worry about making sure that your entire shading of your image takes a while to do. Take your time. Use a smaller one. That's fine. Okay, now I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm going to take it on its side. Okay, I'm going to use this and lightly blend this out. Now I'm going a little quick for time purposes. But the more detail you put into this, the more realistic it's going to look. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. One of my professors used to say, as a teacher, you should never, ever show your artwork. And I used to understand why. And for me, it was like, I want to know how good my professors are, my instructors are. So I want to see their work, kind of like a, a portfolio. But as time has gone on, I finally understand why they've said that. The reason is what happens is we tend to compare ourselves or want to be what they are doing. Keep this in mind, starting right now, right at this very moment, you are developing your own style. Have you seen pictures 
of young ladies, or let me rephrase that. There are young ladies who see pictures of other beautiful women. I want to look like that. There are guys who turn around in high schools, they said, I want to look buff and beefy like that. All our body types are different. We're all going to be different. We can't put ourselves into a body that God hasn't put us into already. Here's what I'm trying to say. You are going to develop a style in the arts. It's okay to use a reference on somebody else. You can admire them. You can admire their work. Heck, there are some works that I see that, oh my goodness, that looks so good. But I have my own style. I don't draw like them. I don't paint like them. I don't have that kind of style. People get the idea that in order to be a good artist, you have to draw photorealistically. That's not true. You don't. Okay, enough. Let's move on. We are now pulling all of this in and we are blending this all into one even shade. Now, I still have some markings of showing where I had drawn. That's okay. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to allow that to happen. I, I wanted to show that. I want it to be more, uh, we won't use the word painterly because we're not painting. We are actually just drawing. <laughs> There's no such thing as drawerly. That doesn't make sense. All right. So, um, we are just illustrating and making this look really as much get now the more time you spend on this the tighter it's going to be and what i mean by tight it's going to look more realistic the exercise here is to understand light and shadow and how we're trying to work with that okay now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my white magic eraser okay and I'm going to look to see where my hot spot is. My hot spot is right here. The hot spot is a direct light. Now, remember we were talking a little earlier about the three different lights. This here is your direct light. The light that is coming from the light source to here, which is hitting directly in the center, that is the hottest spot of your reference right there where it's hitting. So that is going to be my hottest spot. There. I've taken that out and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm going to blend that out so it softens around the edges. All right. Now I'm going to leave all of that there. Now I'm going to go to the next step. I've already got my general area of what I have and I'm going to kind of smooth this out a bit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. There. Okay. Now, my second pencil was the 2H. That's the second pencil I used. Okay. I'm going to put that away. I am now going to move from a 2H to a B. And I'm going to come back over here, look at my reference here. I can see that there is a dark. Now, there is another light here. It goes light, semi dark, light, or semi light, and then dark under here. This light is coming from the ring light that's behind me here and also from the lights on top. Idealistically, you want to be able to have a light over your, over your image here and having it dark so that you're just seeing this so that there's no other light bouncing off. That's the other reason why it's a little tougher if you're using a real reference. If you're using the reference which I'm going to post, which is going to be this one here or the actual photograph from that, it's a little, it's a little easier because you don't have to worry about light bouncing off everywhere else. All right, so now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull some dark. Now, remember I told you earlier, we don't press down hard. I am not pressing any harder than I was when I was using the 2H as I am on my B. And look at that, I'm getting a darker area on this, okay? 
Now this dark area is directly opposite to the hot spot here. And because I have so much lead, take a look at that point there. See all the distance I have on that lid? I can lay it sideways and pull this up just like this. Okay. And I'm going to pull my pencil up a little lighter up in this direction. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this out because I'm going to probably use a little bit more. Now I'm going to go back to my blending stump. Oh, look at that. Oh, that feels so good. Or as my students just say, that's so satisfying. Now I'm going to flip this over because I've gotten it rather dark. So I don't want that to blend all the way out. Now remember earlier when I showed you how to sharpen your pencil, I said you can use the um, sandpaper pad that I had and you can use, it's used for your blending stump. I'm going to show you how that's used. All right. Let's Now, the other thing you have to remember too is I am going to pull this. This is where the point, your darkest area is going to be because this is where the sphere is making contact with the surface. So I'm going to bring my darkest area and pull it down here. Notice that what I have done, I haven't taken my dark area all the way over to the edge. The reason I'm doing that is because this is called reflective light. You don't really see it on here because I don't have the light coming around from this side, bouncing off and hitting back here, but I'm going to, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over because you get reflective light, which is coming from this side, bounces back and hits the sphere on the back side. I'm going to blend this out again. The more time you take on working on this, the more realistic and the more 3D it's going to look. All right. All right, I'm going to pull a little bit more of my 2B, or excuse me, my B. I'm going to pull this over. I'm not using the 2B yet. That was still a little too dark. And I'm just adding a little more to pull more of that to be, or that, excuse me, that B out this way here. All right, now, notice how I'm stepping back a bit from where I am looking here. I am doing this and pulling back. I can see that there's a dark area here. I'm going to blend that out because I don't want a block there. Now I can go back to my darker side of my blending stump, which I had a lot of B graphite, and I can pull that around and blend that. Always step back and look at your sphere. Check it out to see how it's coming up and how it's developing. All right. go. Next step, I'm going to put my BOA and I'm going to jump up to a 4B. Again, I'm not pushing any harder on the sphere or excuse me, on the lead to the sphere. Um, oh, before I go further, um, obviously you can see how I demonstrated on the um, sharpening pencil earlier. I can take that right off. Um, this is what your pad is for. And I'm going to show you have this sandpaper pad. And when your uh, tip becomes contaminated, you just simply do this and scrape that right off. And that's cleaning off your tip of your uh, blending stump. It's not going to get back to pearly white. You can if you just keep working at it. But you can see how much cleaner it is here versus 
here. We got dirt and we got it clean. Okay, so that's what this is for. All right. Oh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull this over. Okay, so now I'm going to come back and I have my 4B. So now I'm gone. I've gone from uh, a B, which is I've gone 2B. I started. I've gone to a 2H. Now I've jumped up to a 2B. This is my third pencil. Now my fourth pencil is a 4B. You don't have to jump from one pencil to another. You can gradually make your gradation bit by bit, but you're taking your time on working on that sphere. All right. Again, I'm not pushing down. I'm using the same amount of pressure. It's just a darker graphite that's allowing me now to push a darker shade. the magic of these pencils. Isn't that great? All right, and now I'm taking my blending stump and pushing my graphite. All right. You can see how the sphere is now becoming having more dimension to it. All right, now at my 4B area, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pull a shadow out. I'm going to start pulling the shadow. Now, this is your cast shadow off from your sphere. And then there's a slight shadow which comes down this way, which is casting off from the front, and you can pull that forward. Now drawing the sphere, doing the cube and the cone, although these are basic, you'll find that it does take practice to really make it look as three-dimensional as possible. Again, you may want to have that rough look. You may be looking for that refined look that looks like it's like ooh, photorealistic. You may just want to have that image look like it's just an illustration and not even use a blending stump and that's okay too. Don't box yourself in to saying, oh, I want to draw like this. You haven't gotten to that stage yet. You're experimenting. You're learning. Okay. You're being learned. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now I'm going to put this away. This is my 4B. Putting it right back so I don't have to be looking all over. I'm going to jump from 4B and I'm going to go up to, uh, let's make that a 6B. I'm going to skip the 5B and I'm going to move up. Now watch this. Okay. Now I am moving a little faster because um, we do have, I don't want to spend so much time to where I am just boring you to death. But the more I build on this, the more darks I get. And I, now I can pull, um, oh, let me write this down here. I've got my fifth pencil and this is the 6B, okay. And this is probably the same pattern you're going to use for the cube and the cone. All right. There we go. Oh. Now notice that my dark area is starting to encroach onto that area. Okay, now I'm going to my kneaded eraser and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this and pick this up. I'm not going to rub it. I'm just going to roll it. Look at that. It creates a texture on that. Now remember when I said it's okay to use your fingers? I still use my fingers. So when I say, when professor said, oh, you shouldn't use your fingers. Hey, I do. And the only problem with this though is now 
you have your fingertips a little contaminated. So you've got to watch where you're laying everything down. Another thing you could use, a paper towel, and rub that into that. Using That would also help uh, to blend, and you're using your fingers to use that pressure to build that. There, there, are, there are different techniques you can use in order to create that um, blending method. Okay, now I'm going to bring my darker pencil and pull this under here, just like this. There we go. This part right here where the sphere meets the surface is the darkest area of your image, of your reference. That's going to be the darkest area right here. And you can see that here. It's the most darkest part right down there at that at that area there. And we're going to pull and get that really dark, but we're not there yet. There we go. All right. And again, blending. All right. Let's jump up, skip the 7B, 8B, and we are now jumping to the 9B, which was at one time the darkest. All right. Oh, I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to pull up. Now you got to be careful with the, now when you start getting to these leads here, even though I'm using the same amount of pressure, they're going to break much easier. The tips will. And so you have to be a little more uh, softer on the pressure. All right. I'm going to pull this up. And you can see I've brought that 9B up. And I'm pulling it out. Now, if I want, I could easily turn around and create a background, which is what you probably want to do very lightly. because you don't want to have a completely white background. Now there is a paper called a halftone paper. It's a gray paper and we'll get into that later. There we go. Oh yeah. I can pull this out. Here's the thing that you want to do. I notice that I, I'm, I'm deliberately pulling out all of this because I don't want stark white. If I have a stark white background, it doesn't give me any room to show any dimension on the sphere. So it's okay. Pull this out and blend that out. I'm really getting my hands into this here. Eh? Look at that, huh? If I want, if you want, you can even go a little darker. This gives it more trauma. It's more dynamic. And hey, it's okay to leave. You don't have to turn around and, and, and make these lines go completely away. Heck no. Keep them in there. That adds, that adds action. It creates movement. It creates, um, it, it doesn't look photorealistic. You know, if you do, you could easily turn around and make these lines completely disappear and and just be a, a complete blend. If that's your goal, that, that's fine. But just trying to show you, you don't have to be, not all not all great art has to look photorealistic. And now we're going to get into that as, as we go through. Now, see how I've made my background? It's, it's, it's created a little bit of, of um, dimension. It gives a little bit of variety to that. Ooh, mm, delicious. Okay. All right, now I'm going to come around and I am going to 
define my sphere a little bit and pull this down here, make a little more distinctive line there. And pull my line up a little bit here. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to use my blending stump and pull this around. <laughs> yes, I even get excited when I do simple things like this. I tell my students this, and I even tell my apprentices. The day you don't get excited about the work that you do is the day you need to get out of filming or not filming of, of well, anything in, 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 in the arts because you should be excited about what you do. You should be enthusiastic. <laughs> All right. And, and, and everything that you create should be phenomenal. Look at that, huh? There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, we're going to come back on this here and blend this a little bit. Oh, yes. You can see I am using my fingers. It's okay. All right, now I'm going to jump to um, the darkest pencil, which I have. Um, this is called a nine double X B. It's equivalent to a twelve. Now I'm gonna pull that dark area here. And pull this up right in here. This is my twelve B. Oh, four, five. There was a six, so that would have been my 9B. I forgot to write that in. And my 12B is number seven. Okay, I'm going to list all these here to show you the order in which I went so you can follow that. All right, I'm going to pull this. And pull this up here just like this. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Baby doll. Yes. There we go. Now, if I spend more time on this, I can pull this up and over. Up and out, just like this. Now, there is a little bit of dark that comes around here, just on this side. All right, and now I'm going to bring up my hot spot here. I'm going to take a little bit here and just add my reflective light back here. I'm going to cool it down a little bit. Boom. And there is your sphere. Okay. As you can see, even the basic part of that is it takes a little practice to do. Okay, we're going to take a little break and then we're going to jump into the cube. That's going to be the next step. It won't take as long, so I'm just going to jump right into that. And then we're going to end up doing the cone, and that'll be the end of part one. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Whew. All right. Now, but, okay, cool. We're ready to go. All right, we're going to kind of move through this rather quickly because we took so much time on the sphere, getting everything all set up and ready to go and the whole bit. All right, so now the cube. Now, we're not going to work so much on perspective, so don't worry about that for right now. So here's how you're going to start your cube. You're going to start off with almost like a diamond shape. Now, I'm going to press a little harder so that you can see what I'm doing here. 
All right. So you have a diamond just like this. Try to make sure that these points here come together and these are level there. I mean, they don't have to be exactly level, but that's all right too. Now, let's say you're not good at drawing a straight line. Well, here's what you can do. Now, your vertical lines now, you can use your T-square and your triangle. You come here, come to this point, make sure that you're even and squared up against the side there. Whoopsie daisy. It's kind of hard having to demonstrate and then draw the line straight down here. Your next line will come down here. And your next line will come right down here. So you have three vertical lines. Okay, move that out of the way there. All right. Now, once you have your three vertical lines, you're going to make the bottom line parallel to this line here. Just like that. The bottom line will be parallel to this line here. And voila, you have your cube. That is where you're starting off with. Now, I'm going to show you a different technique about working with shade. Now, remember how we went, and I'm going to erase this part here. Remember earlier what we did? We um, did the background a little, a little darker, and we added a little bit. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my darkest lead. Now, you, you, you can experiment with this. This is fine. And I'm going to just lightly go over this whole entire square, just like this, the cube. Okay, and that's going to give me a background, a luminescent background. I'm going to take, oh, uh, ah, ha, ha, ha. One of my towels here or something. It can be a, it can be a paper towel. That's fine. It can be just a regular cloth. That's okay. And now what I'm going to do is move my triangle out of the way. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that background. I'm not using a blending stick. I am now using what I draw. Oh, just my T-square. All right. And now what I've created is I've created a, a darker shade for, for me. It's, oh, it's, it's called a mid-tone. It's what we're doing. It's, it's what I'm doing. Now, you can still see the lines. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You know why? Because it creates texture. Okay, so we're moving right along here. Now, our light source is coming in from this direction. Now, let's take a look at the cube itself. If you can see here, my cube. There are three shades of light. The direct light, the indirect light, and the shadow. And then, of course, the cast shadow coming off the back here. So, what I'm going to do next is now I'm going to take, this is the harshest light here. I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm gonna go with a 2B. So what I did is I, I started this off, my first pencil was a, uh, the darkest one was a 9B or 10B, 11 or a 12. And I went very, very light. You don't need to go very dark, just barely go on that, and then you can do that graphite. Another thing you can do is shave the graphite down, and then use it almost like a powder, and then wipe it on here. That's another way you can do it. Now, I'm going to drop down to my 2B, and again, I'm going to go re relatively light. And I'm going to go on the top part here, just lightly, just lightly. Okay, now that I'm working on this area, I'm going to go to my blending stump. And I want to stay within that area. And I'm going to lightly blend that. There we go. Now, this is your lightest. This is your second to the darkest. Now I'm going to go a little darker. I'm going to pull this here. But I'm still using my 2B. Or not to be. Ha, ha. Yeah, I know. Bad joke. Now, I'm going to jump from my 2B. And I'm going to move up to my 6B. Oh, 
going to pull that off there. Now I'm going to darken this. Now watch. This side becomes even darker. Look at that, huh? All right, now the cast shadow. If my light is coming from this direction, my cast shadow is going to go off in this direction. Now, this is going to be a little tricky, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my, oh, uh, what I have, my 6B, right at this point right there, I'm going to make an arbitrary line. And I say that arbitrarily because this is where your skill set is. And I'm coming straight out. At the opposite side, I'm making another line here. Okay? This is my cast shadow off from my light here. And now I'm going to make my area here. This is going to be the darkest part of the cast shadow. I'm going to pull that out. If I really want to get even darker, I'm going to move now to my 9B. I'm going to pull this out really dark to here. Pull that out. And now I'm going to take my blending stump and blend that up. Now, you remember when we talked about shadow diffusion? This is the part that shows how when we get to the top of the cube, it fades out. Watch. We come out. And now we're going to pull this out. We want to keep a nice, even blend going out this way. Now, the longer the shadow is, the lower the light is going to be. If it's a shorter shadow, obviously, the light is higher up. And, of course, this would lighten up, too. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white eraser, and I'm going to get rid of this side here. to give it a sense of depth on that. There we go. Look at that. There we go. And there is our cube. Now, I can also add a hot tone here on this corner here, just to give it a little more highlight. And then just along the edge here, boom. And there we go. Now, I can now take my 9B, pull this down, and define this line a little bit more. Define this down in here. I can put in more detail here. And really just add more and more texture, or I should say shadow, to the box itself. I'm now taking my blending stump and I'm blending all of these areas out here, just like this. I'm going to take this here and pull this up because this section is the darkest part where the, the cube meets the surface. And I'm going to pull that up and then I'm going to blend that out. And there you go the cube. Now, you can follow the same pencil structures that I did that I showed you earlier, that same list. You can follow those lists if you wish, or you can follow by what I did. I first started off with the darkest lead, but again, you're not putting a whole lot of pressure on that. You're just lightly putting on that. And the reason I went with the darkest lead is because it's the softest lead, so it's going to blend easier. But you don't want to go too dark. You're just adding a little bit. That's all you're adding. You're not adding a whole bunch. Okay, uh, 
a bunch of graphite. And I said lead again. And I, I'm using the word lead. And I, oh, 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 terrible. Graphite, graphite, graphite. It's graphite. When you hear me utter the words lead, it's wrong. It's graphite. <sighs> What's it going to take? All right. So now the, the, the softest graphite is the one that's going to gr create your darkest and deepest uh, textures and your um, areas of dark pitch area that really makes everything pop out. Look at that. Okay. All right. Now, the more detail you add to this, the better it's going to look, obviously. Now, if I want, I can lightly come over with my eraser and just ever so slightly pull some of that graphite off. There we go. And there's your cube. Okay. That should give you an idea of how to work the cube there. Again, you use the same principles that we did on the um, sphere, stepping back, looking, making sure you have everything all in proportion. You're looking at your image as well as your reference. You're taking, if you're sitting in your desk, you should have your reference directly in front of you. Okay. One more. We're going to do the cube. We're going to do the cone or the triangle. Good night. And then we'll have everything wrapped up for this uh, first part. Okay. Let's get that cube out of here <sighs> and bring in the cone. And we'll be, we'll be this right after back. Ha! <laughs> Okay, we're in the home stretch. We are now at the last part of part one, and this is going to be the cone. Now, earlier I said that I'm saving this for the last because it is a little more challenging, and I tend to feel that, that, that it is a little more challenging, and I'm gonna explain why. First of all, let's start off with the base. Um, first, I'm gonna start with a nine no i'm gonna go here with the with the darkest uh graphite i said graphite okay an oval I, and i said earlier there's a difference between an ellipse and an oval now what looks the same here actually isn't an oval is an oval it's a shape it's an oval it's it's not a circle but it's an oval okay an ellipse is actually a circle tilted at an angle. That is an ellipse. So whenever you hear somebody talk about an oval and they're talking about a circle tilted, it's actually an ellipse. So yeah, it doesn't really make much difference, but it does in certain ways uh, in the art world, it does. So that's the first thing you want to understand is, is that when we work with the ellipse, it tends to be a little difficult. Now, here is the common error that um, people usually do as beginners. When they make an ellipse, they make a football, and they have points at the end here. There is no point at the end of an ellipse. It's round, and this is why it makes it a little more difficult of having to do or, or work on a cone. Um, making those ellipses are rather hard because sometimes it can be a little higher than the other side it, it's it, it's a little more challenging so it takes a little practice again a template a template is fine because this exercise is about light and shadow practice your ellipses it's practice and that's all it is it's practice 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 to make that ellipse okay so let's move on now we're going to be working on the cone so um i'm going to start off um, with my, again, I'm, I'm starting off with a 2B and I'm going to start off with my ellipse at the bottom. And what that does is it gives me a base to work on and give me, gives me an anchor. 
No, not an anchor like on a boat. An anchor that just sits there that gives me a base to work on. Um, now I'm going to take my center. Now, there, there is a way, um, what they usually teach you is you make a cross this way and one across this way. And there is your center. And then, of course, you come straight up down to your center of your cone. All right, from this point, now this cone has a flat top here. Usually you bring it up to a point, but we're gonna follow what we have here on our um, reference. And I'm gonna bring this down to this point here. Now, are, are you asking me the question May I use my straight edge? Absolutely. Remember, I am a strong proponent, yes, of using whatever tools you can to succeed at what you're doing. It's not cheating. And again, using tracing paper is not cheat. <sighs> there are so many things to help you excel in your skill of your arts. Hey, I, I, I'm reiterating, I've been in this business for 60 years, 50 years, 55, whatever, a long time. And trust me, I have been up and down the block and <laughs> when you get to these series, you're going to find that there are other artists, some of the greatest artists, and I will show you, have used different skills to help them in their craft. So, use it. Get better at practicing. Okay? All right. So, um, what I've done here is I've made my line here and here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... <laughs> erase my lines. Yes. And now we have a solid cone. Alrighty. There's our start. Okay, so now I'm going to, and, and I know I said um, to put your pencils back, but for efficiency purposes and working a little faster, I'm going to leave them here. Alright, so I'm going to go to my H2 once again. And again, you can see the tip of my graphite, not lead, graphite. Oh. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to start off laying out my entire tonality of my cone. Just lay that right out. There we go. Look at that, huh? And we're starting off with the base tonal overall total area of our cone, okay? I'm coming back with my blending stump. And I am blending, balancing out my tonality. Oh, love it. Yes. There we go. Beautificationized. Yes. Okay, so we now have our total layout. All right, so now I'm going to, now that I've done my H, I am now going to move up to my 2B. Or not 2B. Right, that's getting old. Let's, no, no more, I promise. Our line here, now this is another part where it starts to get a little more challenging. Um, the tip of the cone here, the shadow, is going to be smaller than at the bottom. In other words, down here, it's going to be wider than it is at the top.
And so we kind of have to have a gradation that comes with this cone. So it's not like the cube. You had one solid edge, one was lighter, second one was not as dark as the shadow, but not as light as the direct light. So you had three different distinctive sides to work on. The sphere had a round contour to it. And then of course your shadow was at the bottom. So I guess the sphere could be relatively tough, but it's it's got a round contour, so it's easier to work with. I, again, that's that's where I'm, I'm thinking. There'll be other artists that will disagree with me. The cone, however, doesn't have straight edges, nor does it have the round perfect balance. It changes as it goes into a different direction. Now, if you're talking about like a pyramid, then it's a boxy. It, 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 it brings up a whole different set of issues, and that's a little easier, but the cone is a, a lot more challenging. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to blend this. Now, here is where it gets tricky, because as I come around the turn here, it starts to lighten up in this direction here because I have my direct light here, okay? And now I'm going to bring this and pull this over just like this. We haven't gotten to the shadow, and that's going to be the next part that's going to be rather challenging. <laughs> Again, practice. And don't get frustrated if you can't get this right away. Hey, if you've got the cube down and you've got the sphere down, sphere, and this is the most challenging, again, look at the positives of what you have done. Think about what you've done when you first started these tutorials. I bet right now you go back and you look at the circles that you did. If you've been practicing, you'll probably find that you're taking those steps further and further and further. Let me give you an example. I use an, I use an example of about how young teenagers or young individuals look at other people and say, I want to look like them. And I use that an analogy in the arts. Okay. Same thing when an athlete or a um, person who is working out, they don't see the improvement in their body because they're stuck with themselves every single day. But when a person who hasn't seen that person or hasn't seen you for a while, they go, whoa, what have you been doing? And they go, you, you mean you can see a difference? It's the same thing in the arts. You may not be able to see some of the stuff that you've improved on, but other people will. Another thing to do is save your work. Save everything. Because you can go back as a reference and say, whoa, I did that. Trust me, I go back to some of my stuff I did in high school and I go, huh? What? Why did I think that I was all that great? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. So. Come around and we are working on this. I know I give you a lot of information. It's because, in all honesty... I wish there were a lot of other high school teachers that would have been able to work with me on a lot of other stuff that I have. That's a whole different story. We won't bother going into that. Anyway, so let's move on. I don't want you to follow the same traps that I did. And we'll be talking more about careers in art and all this, but we're starting right here. Okay. Okay. Now, before I make this side any lighter... This is the way I work it. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. So I'm going to, well, that's a nine. I don't want to go up to my nine. I'm going to go up to my, let's go to what? Three B. And again, I am not pushing any harder on my graphite. It's the same pressure. It's just a darker graphite. That's it. And that's the magic of of learning how and when to use your graphites to create a darker shaded area. Now, when we lay the graphite down, it's it gets darker when we turn around and we add our blending stump. Look at that magic. Now, you can see the line is straight down, so I'm going to have to pull this out a little bit more at the bottom because 
the shade does get a little darker. Now, you've probably noticed I'm getting a little closer. And the reason I'm getting a little closer is because I'm pushing down harder on my work here. And I'm still stepping back and looking at what I'm doing. I'm not permanently doing this. I'm not just right down on there, okay? So I'm not doing this the whole time. I'm still looking back and I'm still stepping back on my work here, okay, to see where I'm going. And here's the other thing too, um, unless you're trying to create a texture, you pretty much want to stay in contour with the direction of what you're using here. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go in this direction. You might be trying to develop a different style. And not a different style. And that's the other thing I said. Right now, you are just learning. You are learning about light and shadow. You're learning about how to work these things. So experiment with it. Have fun with it. Try some, you know, modified cross hatching if you want. Try some different ideals, ideas, and even research some of the other artists. In I mean, Google that stuff. Before, when I was in school, all you had to do was you had to go to a library. Hey, the library is you just go on to Google and find cross hatching, pencil drawing, cones, styles of it, and you'll find hundreds of different styles. Like I said, just because a person draws, you don't have to be photorealistic. To draw there's a difference between fine art and illustration and we'll get into that again later but I, I'm trying to prepare you for what's coming up okay now again I'm leaving this side a little lighter because I'm creating some reflective light as it wraps around the cone itself here all right and I'm pulling this up all right so now I'm going to jump from my 3B and I'm going to go to a 5B. And again, I'm going to go darker here. Now, when I get down to the bottom or the base of the cone, again, always at the bottom, this is where the darkest part of that, of the cone, the cube, and the sphere is going to be. So I'm going to pull that right through here and carry that around here. And I'm gonna bring this up here, just like this. All right, now, before I go any darker, I'm gonna do something. Here. I'm gonna start working on the light. Sorry. Right. So again, I'm gonna take my white. I'm gonna use the gum eraser this time. And as you can see, it it pulls same amount, but it has a different feel there. Now I'm gonna bring this down. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give a nice clean edge here. Bring this up here just like this now. Okay. There. Now, one of the tools that I did not mention, and I, I don't have it with me right now, but I'll show it to you a little later. We'll do it on, on part two, is a uh, sweep, a broom. And um, I'll show that to you. you. You should probably... I didn't mention about purchasing one because there's a lot of tools that you're going to end up... You, you end up buying... Um, so I will show you that one um, eventually as time goes on and get that all set up for you and, and you, you can you can purchase that. I'll, I'll introduce you to more and more tools because I don't want you to have to buy everything all at once. The essential or the, the, the first startup of buying the essential stuff is kind of pricey, but I try to move you along so you don't have to buy everything all at once. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over on this side and I'm going to lighten this up to give me more of a hot spot. There we go. Look at that. Okay. And then I'm going to take my, okay, my building stump's in my hand. Where's my building stump? It's in my hand. And then again, I'm going to fade that 
And then I'm going to take this side and just create there. And then now it's really hot. When, when I talk about hot, it's, it's really warmed up. And now I'm going to come back up here, smooth that out so it, it cools it down just a little bit. There we go. All right, now the next step that I'm going to do is the um, shadow, the cast shadow. This is the part that's hard because the cast shadow on the cone, it's, if you don't do it right, it can look like it's riding up. It looks like it's coming down. It looks like it's at a cattywampus, and it's an optical illusion. But if we look at our ellipse that we have here, if our light is coming at this angle here, the light or my edge of my cone is coming out this way. Then behind that cone, it's coming out this way. Now, this is the tricky part because remember when we did the cube, we had an even line. This is where it gets a little more challenging because the cone, it's conical. It, it, it moves in this direction. So if we pull up this way, we have to bring it to a point like this. See what I'm saying? And if you don't lay it out right, it looks wrong <laughs> all right so i'm gonna bring my shadow up here and i have again this is my this is my 5b yes my 5b okay bring this up here and again darkest part is right next to the base of the object and I'm going to stop right there. Because now I'm going to let my blending stump take the rest of the shadow out. Here's the other thing. When you do your shadow, I suggest that you make a constant push out and then glide like a plane taking off. Don't go straight and stop. If you stop, you're going to end up with these little uneven bump like this you're going to end up with stuff like that all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here and then push straight out and glide out you can fade that out okay now you can see what i did i you, you can see I, and it's very tempting and you want to blend that right out just like that pull it out Pull it out. Okay, there we go. And of course, as the shadow gets further away, it diffuses. All right, I haven't even gotten now. I'm going to jump to my 9B. All right, bring in this right here to the 9B right here. Look at this. And now that really pumps up that shadow right up in here right up there look at that huh and then to really add an accent on this there we go okay and finally go look at that 9b just really pops that right up and then i pull my 9b out it gives me a great cast shadow pick up anything that is bumped off there and look at that and there is our cone all right beautiful 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 Ooh, there you go that gives you something to work on now. Now you have the cone, you have the cube, and you have the sphere. Practice these. Take your time. The reason I was able to move these so fast is because I've been doing it for years. But use this as a reference. Okay, so what I'm going to have now on the tutorial is you're going to have six images that you can download. Three of them, which are the cone, the sphere, and the, the, the cube, three of them are going to be from a photograph from the actual 
images or what we use here. The other three are going to be the drawings in which I did here. So you can either decide to challenge yourself and make your um, references look photorealistic and, and try to pull them up from that, that's fine too. Or you can use the reference here and then build on that. Either or, what you want to do is you want to have an understanding of light and shadow and what you're doing. Experiment and have fun with it. You're developing a style, you're developing a technique, so don't get yourself stifled into thinking, oh my gosh, this doesn't look as good, because if, you've, if you're understanding it and you're creating it, let yourself be free. There's, like I said, there's a lot of contradictions in, in the art world, and you will, we'll, 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 we'll go through that. You'll, you'll see what we have on there as far as contradictions are, but you want to try and, and do the best you can in understanding light and shadow. That's the core. The core is understanding your pencils, understanding how you're using them, uh, your, how to sharpen them, how, how your tools will create the effect that you're trying to do. And constantly finding out what other artists are doing um, also helps you to develop uh, your skill set. Okay, this is going to end part one. Next week, we will be working on the compositional side. So we're going to take these three objects and then I'm going to talk to you about dividing up the uh, picture plane. For instance, that's a cone. That's a cone. Not very interesting. If we put a frame around it, it's a cone. There's no composition. I'll explain what composition is and what it does, how it anchors the person. It keeps the person viewed or, or, or stuck to what you're watching. It's like a movie, for instance. You go see a bad movie, yeah, it's like, yeah, I gotta see that. It, it, the plot is wrong, everything is wrong. Same thing in pictures. If you don't have a good composition, you can have the best drawings ever, but if there's no composition to it, it's like, it's not going anywhere. It's there, it's just blah. Although an artist may want to create just one object that you're anchored to. But again, for the sake of learning, we're going to study about composition. And, that, that, and that'll be the next one that we're working on. Um, again, every Thursday, 3.30, uh, we will be uh, launching a new post. Remember, hit that like button, okay? Uh, subscribe, tell your friends um, about what we're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're gradually getting more and more into this. And like I said, we're going to get into charcoal. We're going to get into this a lot, a lot to do about. But we're even going to get into pastels. You're going to see oil pastels and uh, uh, soft pastels and, and how they work and what they're made of and all that other good stuff. So we'll, we'll be getting into that. And then later on down the road, we'll start talking about painting and all that other good stuff. Okay? All right. Well, this is Professor Arnulfo Jacinto saying good night. Uh, good day and uh, just telling you to keep practicing and keep working out there and I look forward to seeing you and as always may the Lord be with you take care of yourself and we'll see you next week for part two
Pantalabomba.